Hello everybody and welcome back to Battletech where we are continuing this flashpoint. We're currently trying to, you know, stamp out sedition in the Capellan Confederation and the uh, opposition appears to be, you know, very self-righteous. And we're probably going to help them. <laughs> okay, so onward we go. We do need to repair this Cyclops a little bit. We took some internal damage there. Ooh, three Cyclops parts. We can only get one. Hopefully we get one more in the random. And we did. Perfect. That's a full Cyclops. Do we want to refit that as a bruiser? And replace our extant Warhammer? We might want to. Anyway, we'll deal with that in a moment. Exo, we're being hailed by Commander Eliathi of Razorback Company. It looks like she wants to parlay. Should I put her on the view screen? Go ahead. If she wants to talk, we can talk. So, you're Commander Juggernaut. That's not my name. Under any other circumstances, I'd be honored to speak with you. You're developing quite the reputation out on the frontier. Is this a social call, Commander Eliathi, or was there something you actually wanted to discuss? A little of both, actually. Look, Commander, you're on the wrong side of this scenario, full stop. Our clients aren't hurting anybody. They don't deserve what you're about to rain down on them. I feel for them, Commander Eliathi, but the Capellan State takes a dim view of sedition, and your clients tr crossed a line. Maybe so, but they don't deserve to die for it. Look, Commander, the Volkovites aren't even dissidents. They're a local religion, sort of a folk revivalist movement. The public slander your client told you about was a sermon delivered in a Volkovite church to a Volkovite audience. It isn't like they were shouting through megaphones in the public square. They were talking loud enough to catch the Chancellor's attention. That's a bad idea in the Confederation. Hell, it'd be a bad idea anywhere, Eliathi. I feel for your clients, but they should have known better. Maybe so. But the fact is, House Liao wants my clients dead, and it's paying you to pull the trigger. If you follow through, you'll be wiping them out over a few passages in a couple of books. Are you okay with that, Atreides? Because I wouldn't be. I'll say I'm not okay with it. What are you proposing? I already said we'd probably be turning on them. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. My clients have authorized me to offer double what House Liao is paying if you'll help them escort them off-world rather than killing them. We'll take them back to Joppa in the frontier. They'll be out of House Liao's hair and out of danger, and you'll come out on top. But House Liao isn't going to be happy about this. The Chancellor himself is watching this job, Commander. If we break our contract, our reputation with House Liao is going to go right in the toilet. But it's also House Liao, so... do we care? <laughs> I can't dispute that. You'd be taking a risk. But from one mercenary to commander to another, it's the right thing to do. Anyway, choice is yours. What's it going to be? We're going to break our contract with House Liao. Like I said, they're House Liao. They deserve it. Glad to hear it. After the ass-whipping you just handed us, the last thing I wanted to do was go up against your lance again. Especially since it's going to have your Cyclops now. <laughs> I'll pass your message along and tell Persephone to get her people packed up and ready to move. That was the right thing to do, Commander. Thank you. I remind you, you said that when you when Chancellor Liao has Maskarovka agents strangle us in our sleep. Taking a risk, no doubt, but we're doing it for the right reasons. Let's get Volkov and her people out of here. We can worry about the ramifications later. Indeed we can, and indeed we will. So, we do need to hop into our mech bay. For sure. We need to repair this 10Q Cyclops. And yeah, I think we want to run this guy for sure. So we'll repair this. And I think we go ahead and just strip the mech and send it to storage, the Warhammer 6R. The Cyclops 10Z will be taking that position. Let's see if we have an extra 6R. I don't think we do. But let's just check real quick here. Let's see, it'll be down here, Warhammer 6R. Nope, we've only got the one in storage. Okay, perfect. So, 
Let's go ahead and refit this Cyclops. And I want to have that UAC-20 on here for sure. It goes in this torso, okay. Uh. Oh, here it is. It's all the way down here. It's not sorted with the rest of the auto cannons. <laughs> I was going to say. And then we want to max this armor. Only four tons left. Hmm. That's the problem with Cyclops. They don't have a huge amount of spare tonnage. I think we go ahead and strip off a little bit of armor from each section. So that we have five tons, even. And then I think we run maybe a pair of medium lasers. One in each arm. We're going to need AC-20 ammo. That's in here, of course. Hmm. I'm always disappointed with the amount of free tonnage on a Cyclops. That said, this is a heck of a lot of armor. Total armor of 1680. That is very durable. And we'd have one ton available for a heat sink, or potentially a heat exchanger. No, heat exchangers are two. And we don't have a heat exchanger anyway. What I wouldn't give right now for a double heat sink. We've got this battle computer, plus one initiative for all Lance units. That's really good. Does that weigh anything? No, it does not. Okay. So our heat generation of the UAC-20, which is our primary weapon, is 48. And we only sink 33 heat. Should we run just a single round of AC-20 ammo? I mean, we can alternate between the UAC-20 and the medium lasers, but uh, even a single medium laser is going to be building heat like this. Maybe we should go for something slightly different? I mean, I want to run the UAC-20. It's 15 tons compared to an AC-20's 14 tons, so it's one ton different. It's very worthwhile. We don't have a lot of extra space. SRM-2s weigh one ton and generate four heat. I mean, even with only two tons of AC-20 ammo, that's only going to be a total of five turns of being able to fire the AC-20. Maybe we should rethink this. Take the AC-20 off, use lighter weaponry, have this maybe be more of an SRM boat. We have two SRM slots available. So we could run, say, dual SRM-6s. And then we would need some SRM ammo. Those are 100 rounds each, so two tons of SRM ammo should be plenty. And then we could run a bunch of medium lasers. Where is our medium lasers at? Uh, <laughs> I thought we had more than this. No, we're out of medium lasers? Okay. Are there any in the store? You are large. You are small. We'll buy a medium laser. New weapon systems. And I think we'll go ahead and buy these ER smalls that are here. New weapon systems. We can't use them on this mech, but that's okay. So we'll put a medium laser on here. So we've got triple medium laser, double SRM-6. This is basically the same position that the Orion is in. We've got five tons remaining for heat sinks. So 
So I think we go ahead and put one in the CT. And two in each leg. That's not great on the heat efficiency. That said, we can avoid firing medium lasers. It's not a huge deal. There aren't any heat exchangers in here, are there? No. Okay. So we'll call that good for now. We'll see how that feels heat-wise. Our heat efficiency is very low, but we can basically play it like we have been the Orion. And now I want to change out the Orion and have this be more like in the Warhammer's old slot. It doesn't have any support slots, but we can take this out. Like, basically, I want to just strip everything. Strip the equips. Okay, we've got 25 tons to work with. That is actually better <laughs> than the Cyclops. We'll put the UAC-20 in here, and then we're going to need two tons of AC-20 ammo. Okay. And then we're going to need at least a pair of heat sinks. So our heat, our heat sinking is moderate. I want to put in a few additional medium lasers, or do we want to run SRMs again? SRMs are very good. We could run, say, an SRM 6 and an SRM 4, and then we would have 10 turns of SRM ammo. Like that. That could work. Max damage of 292. Let's do it. I'll get it in the schedule. Okay. So let's get those done. Ten days to get all this done. And there we go. Fantastic. So now let's continue the flashpoint. Okay, this is a battle in the tundra. Well, let's go. This is not how we want this set up. We want this Cyclops over here, Bull Shark here, Orion here, this Cyclops here. Now, let's see here. Jenkins is a striker, Vamp is a lancer, Road Rash is an outrider. Okay, there we go. That should be fine. Okay, I think we are ready to deploy this. So we're going to be considerably less good at punching, but our alpha damage is going to be up dramatically. So we need to eliminate the Liao units. Good on you for being on the right side of this conflict, Atreides. I know it couldn't have been an easy decision. And speaking of difficult matters, you're about to have a fight on your hands. House Liao has sent a detachment of mechs to finish your job for you, and unfortunately, Razorback Company is in no position to deal with them. No good deed goes unpunished, Alpha Lance. Not ever. Well, I mean, these are house units, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, boss, I'm seeing a couple of Liao attack lances on my screen, and I'm willing to bet their pirates are... Pirates? <laughs> their pilots are pretty angry. I'd wager they're furious. Get in there and take them out, but do it carefully. You need to come through this fight in good enough shape to escort the Volkovites to safety. I'm not concerned. We've got lots of backups. Okay, so. These guys are up over here. Fire support here. This is a decent LOS break if we need to dip back. Juggernaut's here, fire support here. I like it. Cyclops goes here. Orion goes here. Wait, which Cyclops is that? That's the 10Z. Okay, we'll we'll run it over that way. Bull Shark and this Cyclops. Excellent.
That's a lot of enemies out there moving. Maybe we should have taken this point, but... No, I think this is good. We'll drop the 10Z right up over here. Enemy detected. The Orion can be slightly behind over here. Position confirmed. The Bull Shark is just going to be making for this over here. On my way. Same with the Cyclops, which can actually make it there. Move order confirmed. Excellent. Enter in combat. 40 ton mech? Oh my. Yeah, I'm not concerned about a Vulcan. Yeah, I'm really not concerned about that. We're going to reserve. Bring it. We're going to reserve again. Bring it. 75 tonner, like an Orion. Yep, that's an Orion, all right. Yeah, so, um, we really don't care about anything that just happened. Okay, another 75 tonner over here. Commander. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and precision strike this Vulcan in the head. He's skylined. Targeting for an alpha strike. Ooh. Double ER medium lasers in the head. That was I lucky. They've got a phase one mover out there. Okay. How are we doing on range on that Orion? Not amazingly well. Yes, Commander. Hmm. We'd have to break cover. And our odds of hitting aren't amazing. Waiting for orders. I think we let them come to us. We'll dip the Cyclops back over here and brace. Yes, command. We'll get the Bull Shark into cover. Roger. And brace. We're reserving. We're reserving again. I want him to come in. Okay, that's fine. Warning. Detecting mech warrior injury. Of course. Whenever I'm driving, I always get a head hit. <laughs> okay, that's Black Knight. Okay. Black Knight in the water. That's a good place for a Black Knight to be, considering their heat levels. However, this Orion is really vulnerable. He is on rough terrain, and with only two evasive pips, we can strip aye, those aye. basically immediately, and maybe we get lucky and get head hits again? That said, we're out of ER medium range. Receiving. Maybe we precision strike it with the bull shark. Only 2% chance. Okay, just go for CT then. Well, he's definitely hurting. And he took a bunch of stability damage. Standing by. Give him a bunch more. Ooh, AC-10 ammo explosion. I like it. That's gonna hurt. Yes, boss. Gonna step this Orion forward here. Heading out. And this will knock him down, if not outright kill him. Firing full on him. Okay, for sure a knockdown. Odds were a bit low on the UAC-20, but that tends to happen. Okay, um, we're fine where we are, actually. We can guarantee this kill, pretty much. There we go, one Orion dead. And now we can turn on this Black Knight. I 
I think that's a Jaeger. I've got eyes on hostile reinforcements. They're heading your way. Yeah, that's fine. They're up over here. So with that in mind, yes, Commander. we're going to start moving our Cyclops over here. We're going to move our fire support into these trees. There we go. We're continuing to attack the Cyclops. The Cyclops can take it, though. Like, the amount of armor it has after all this is still higher than the amount that the Orion has completely fresh. Speaking of the Orion, we're going to step forward over here. We're going to precision strike the Black Knight with that UAC-20. I think we got to go for this torso or this leg, and I think we go for the torso. Copy that. That'll be a knockdown. Inflicted some heavy damage. Oh, that didn't knock him down. Okay. But well, they're gonna attack the Orion. That's fine. Go for it. That's why the Orion is there, after all. Okay. I do want to find a place to put the Cyclops. Unfortunately, there really isn't one. We'd be just out of range of everything right here. So we're going to have to sprint over this direction and not actually uh, not actually fire with the Cyclops. Makes me a little bit sad. Let's see, we can just fire the UAC-5s at this guy, which will knock him down. Copy that. Excellent. So there's a knockdown on the Black Knight. And he immediately got up. Okay. And he is going to fire on the Cyclops. He actually hit with the large laser. Not that the Cyclops cares. They still have that other Phase 2 mover out there, or Phase 1 mover, with at least two PPCs. Both missed, which was lucky, but, uh, that's interesting. Okay, Commander. let's get into the water with the Orion. Moving to position. So that we can sink some of this heat out. That's three pilot injuries on this guy. Fifty tonner moving in. It's probably a trebuchet with that number of missiles in a fifty tonner. Awaiting orders. I want you to come up here. Precision strike this guy. In this leg. Don't fire your LRMs. I want to sink heat. Target confirmed. There's a leg destruction. I think that should be a pilot kill. Reporting critical hit. Really? That's four pilot injuries, so he has five pips. At least. They've got a lock on me. Interesting. Don't really care about that. You're doing okay. We're going to step forward with the Cyclops. And we're just going to finish this guy off. I'm done with him. Excellent. Commander? Now our bull shark is pretty much just going to have to sprint forward. Not a whole lot we can do this turn. Okay, that's an 80 ton of Victor. Do Victors have... Oh, triple PPC. That's an awesome. 
for sure. I'm okay with an awesome, though. We'll go ahead and take our Orion. We can't go out into here? Is this deeper water? This might be deeper water right here. Hmm. Yeah, we have to go around it. We'll use the Orion as a bit of a scout, then. We'll go for five evasive pips. And in the water. Okay. Warning. Detecting mech warrior injury. Of course. <laughs> That's why we're not maxed yet. I'm going to reserve here. And then the trebuchet walks forward. Jaeger is going to also fire on the Cyclops. Also hit that torso, probably. Structure exposed over here. So they are through that armor. And a knockdown. Oof. That's okay, though. So, we get to move basically infinitely now. So I want to move the bull shark forward a little bit. Like, we can move all of our mechs at this point. I'm assuming, yeah, we're not in thumper range. So, with that in mind, I think we fire on trebuchet. Wasn't ideal. Commander. Jenkins, get up over here. On my way. And we'll provide additional covering fire. We're going to go ahead and precision strike this trebuchet now. 18% for head hits, do it. Eh, not a great option. Oh wait, the awesome got to move. He's gonna called shot. Okay, he didn't do a good job. <laughs> that could have been far worse. Okay, we're going to get up. And we're going to move the Cyclops over here. And just brace. Now they're going to fire on the Orion. This is fine. I feel like reserving. Copy that. Mm, exposed over here. There's nothing in that arm, though. Okay. Now I want to move the Cyclops up over here into cover. And we are going to precision strike this trebuchet. In that arm. That's a dead trip. Fantastic. Next, Need something I'm going to step the bull shark forward a little bit here. Moving out. And we're going to continue focusing on this trebuchet. In, I believe, this torso. Some of this. Okay, good hits. Critical hit, Commander. Indeed. Waiting for orders. We are going to back off the Orion a little bit here. I'd like to get the Orion up over here. Maybe we just... Yes, we can't sprint. Commander. Maybe we just move and brace. Position confirmed. That should be okay. Awaiting orders. And now Jenkins... You'd have direct LOS, but you're not in ER medium range there. You're barely in ER medium range here. You're also fresh, so I think you can take a turn of taking hits if they attack you. Finish off the trebuchet with your ER mediums and LRMs. Let's see how you like this. Excellent. Smoked one. 
Okay. Awesome's gonna fire. That's why we braced. Reporting minimal damage. Fantastic. Our turn. Well, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we'll finish off the little bit that remains of this mission and keep working on this flashpoint. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>